Hello. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to leave that in. Hello, and welcome to Finish My Story, where we try to tell narratively complex stories one line at a time. Ho, 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 we're here. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know why I said ho ho ho. We're as far from Christmas as we're gonna get. A little late, Peter. Yeah. That's not true. I think the more the year goes, the further away we get from from last I guess, Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the the six month point is in between both Christmases, but it's the longest. It's about as far until next Christmas as we're gonna get. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to the Finish My Story podcast, a non Christmas related podcast <laughs> where we try to tell narratively complex stories one line at a time. As I mentioned, my name is Peter. And I'm an improv actor. I'm Les, and I am a storyteller. And I'm Jonathan. I'm a screenwriter. And um, we are here. We're back. Um, it's uh, us again. You thought you could get rid of us, but like the Terminator, we rise again. Um, better and stronger than ever. That's not how the Terminator works. I don't remember exactly how the Terminator <laughs> works, all right? I just know he does, he's hard to kill. That's the whole thing. <laughs> just like us. We're like cockroaches. Right. Um, uh, we're, we lost our studio. Just, just for today. Just for today. It's raining in LA, which of course means like it's like the apocalypse here. It really is, actually. Like... <laughs> oh my goodness. People, I'm from Boston. Les is from Germany. John's from LA. So he he probably doesn't know what he's doing. But I'm um, so scared. There is water falling from the sky. Where <laughs> wh- how? <laughs> what is what Can we just burn it to the ground? I don't I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> well, that's how most uh, Angelinos react to this. Um Angelinos Jolie She's one of them, I guess. <laughs> right. That was a bad joke, John. I'll Not a good it. way to start the, the the podcast off with the joke. You started like that. with ho ho ho. I think I'm okay. Maybe I was pointing to you guys, huh? How dare you? I'm a married man. I can't be a ho. Um. Well, hoes know no bounds. Yeah, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Actually, uh, that's ironic. Welcome back. What what are um. What's your narrative you've been reading? Let's we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Les, what are you wa- watching? Reading things. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so for Christmas, my new mother-in-law got me Union Jack socks. Oh. But she also got me a biography and a scandalous biography of Prince Charles. Ooh. And so that's what I'm reading. And I thought it was gonna be boring, but it's actually pretty juicy. <laughs> this is like you, you're on a prince kick right now, right? You were reading. You're talking about Meghan Merkel. You were reading. You're watching The Crown. You're really going into it. Well, you know, it's that whole married to a Brit thing. I guess. Mm. <laughs> Gross. Yikes. I think they they force you to like The Crown. It's indoctrination. <laughs> They're slowly trying to take us back, <laughs> one man at a time. I don't think they want us anymore. Right? Yeah. That's <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been reading Fire and Fury. That's fun. Ooh, and and it's salacious. Really? And uh, we probably shouldn't talk too much about it because you, you may, you know, we're we're a storytelling podcast, not a political podcast. Although I think we we've said plenty of things about our current president that might have turned people off. Anyway, now but, would you recommend it? Like, is it juicy? <laughs> um, it's a little bit juicy. Yeah, I I, I recommend it. I, it's when you're reading, it's hard to tell like how much is real and like how much. Like, I believe a lot of it, and a lot of it I believe just because it sounds like what I've heard already, but just, like, crazy shit. Well, and you want to believe the drama. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, little things like he can't really read, and, like, people really, really, really think he's an idiot, don't just call him one, and, like, he, you've seen some of the details about, like, how he eats and stuff like that, and, Uh like, he didn't want to win, and Ivanka Trump you know, may want to run, and it's like, oh my goodness, this is this is some shit. Sold. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> and then also, I've been watching the. I finally got around to watching Marvel's The Punisher, um, because oh, so you get to hear a lot of the screaming. The... <laughs> yeah, he screams a lot. <laughs> Kevin Smith said my favorite thing about The Punisher, where it's just like in every other Marvel 
property. It's always some, something like light and happy. And in yeah. the Punisher, it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe my family's dead. Yeah. Every scene ends with him just like wallowing and, and it's Did kind you of watch amazing. it? I did. Yeah. I, I, I really liked it actually. I binged pretty quick. I thought I was gonna, wasn't going to like it because I don't like the character that much, but it was really fascinating. And it does one of the, the episode three or four is one of the best episodes about being a veteran in the United States I've ever seen of a thing. And John Bernthal is great. He's great. What have you been reading, watching? I mean, I, I don't really read. Yeah. Um, well, we've been over this. <laughs> um, I've been, so the last thing I saw that I really, really loved, I saw Phantom Thread. Oh. Paul Thomas Anderson. Daniel Day Lewis's last picture. Um, yeah, they keep saying that. He'll be back. Yeah, he will. He, you ha- like, when you do work as well as Daniel Day, mm-hmm. you need to sort of just, like, disappear for a little bit. And that's, it's funny, it's sort of a, a plot point in Phantom Thread where it's like you give everything that you can to the creative field and then you need to just disappear for three or four days and just lay in bed because your body can't keep up. Mm. But, I mean, this movie is amazing. I, I'm a huge Paul Thomas Anderson fan. I know a lot of people kind of maybe think he's boring. Mm. Um, I don't. But it sort of harkens back to, like, the romance movies of the 50s. Ooh. Um, Interesting. I've and heard the trailers are do not explain what it is at all. That's, that's good. Yeah, I don't I want like it to that. be given away. Yeah, me too. But it's worth seeing. It's amazing. Absolutely worth seeing. Acting is incredible. Cinematography is just like... There are so many times in the movie that I just had this stupid smile on my face from the Aww. shot. Um, and it's all shot in 70 millimeter. So if Ooh. you can see it in 70 millimeter... Go good. out there and see it. Yeah, I saw it at the Audience. Arclight Hollywood and we got like pamphlets. Like it was a play. It was pretty great. Dark light. Now, did you guys see I, Tanya? I haven't seen it yet. I did. You? Oh my god. I like her now. Mo well, grow up. You didn't like Margot Robbie before him? No, no, no. Oh, Tanya Harding. <laughs> like, I feel, without giving anything away, like, you leave, like, feeling bad for her. Interesting. You really do. It's like a I've successful narrative. <laughs> Speaking of which, oh, look at that transition. Look at that <laughs> transition. We're going to get into it. Because, um, to finish my story, we try to tell narratively successful or complex stories <laughs> one line at a time now we got some some special facets of that that we do other than just telling them one line at a time we got things like story pause hey what's the story pause well it's when i don't necessarily understand exactly something that someone else says or i want to elaborate yeah. or i want to make fun of somebody else i'm gonna pause the story you're gonna pause it you know how are you gonna do that i just i just said the story pause. okay and right. when i want to get back into it yeah what do you say Story resume. Or resume story. Thank you, Peter. And then we also have a a thing called story punishment, um, which is a little bit different. Les, what's a story punishment? Story punishment is, you know, if you get a name wrong or you forget details or you basically just screw up. What do we do? We get punished. But how do we get punished? Well, you know, when if you you hear a bing. Bing. Chandler bing. And then um, our listeners get to pick a punishment oh yes uh you can find us on our social media platforms at finish my story podcast on facebook and instagram or finish story cast on twitter you can vote there some prior punishments have included being shot in the face with nerf guns and if you're listening to this now and our last two punishments aren't up i'm sorry they will be up soon timing holidays made things difficult but you will see me doing some embarrassing things then you'll see us all doing a choreographed dance to Beyonce. And it is currently tied. As I record this, that one is tied too. We were tied before with the last one. We're tied again between Crazy in Love and Single Ladies. So once we get one more vote in, that's what we'll decide. We have some indecisive listeners. Or very decisive listeners who disagree vehemently. (laughs) It would be an honor to dance to Beyonce. Yeah, so we'll do that. And also, I think that's our story celebration, but that's just because we wanted to dance to Beyonce. If no one gets binged, no one gets punished. It's I like think we're going to make that rule. For none of long. us were being story punished, so we just wanted to punish you, the listener. Yes, for us being successful. By watching us dance to Beyonce. So if none of us get binged, there will be no story punishment, but we'll do something for you. Oh, Going to get two Jews dancing. <laughs> hey, one. Like I said, I have some rhythm. Yeah. When a Jewish person says that, they're like, they that have means... some rhythm. That's bad. <laughs> well, um, we're going to go with something famous from literature today. We've been saving this one, but it seems like the perfect day for it outside. 
just for the line it has nothing to do with the book which is good because we start with the uh, we haven't mentioned this we start with famous lines from literature movies that kind of thing and this one uh we try not to stay close to the path last week again was a bible verse about beyonce so i mean she is kind of like a biblical figure of our time but still we're gonna get away from it and this week is from the famed jane Eyre by charlotte bronte in case you're wondering which bronte sister if it comes up it's not emily it's charlotte there you go um and uh, who's gonna start? Who's gonna start? I I will start. I'm and a I'm gonna throw my hat in the ring. Okay, and then I will go after you. So what's the order? Uh, it'll go me. Okay, John. Yeah, John. Uh, followed by uh, Peter. Yeah, me and Peter. And and then it'll go to Les. Okay, me? and then it's at Les. Yeah, and then from Les. Yeah, we're gonna going? try this cool thing. It's gonna go back to me. Oh. Okay. And then we're gonna go back to Peter. And then it's me again. And then it's back to Les. Okay, back to me. And, and so we then just it sort of continue like that. that. Okay. I I, I yeah. I guess. That makes sense. Does it, though? I, I guess. Does it, though? If it doesn't, we've been doing this wrong for a very long time. <laughs> I'm so confused. All right, let's go. Take us away, Johnny boy. Yeah, let's do it. There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. Because Frederick's legs were asleep. Frederick had a lot to drink the night before and passed out while kneeling. And if it were anything like the last time he was hungover, his legs would not regain feeling for hours. You see, Frederick had a rare neurological condition that made certain parts of his body become paralyzed for long periods of time when he was dehydrated. Frederick had cotton mouth and was dying for a bottle of water. Unfortunately for him, that bottle of water was on the other side of the room. So, with all the strength he could muster, and without the use of his legs, Frederick slid him self across the gra- the floor of his room in his tiny apartment in Queens and got the bottle of water. <laughs> he said as he slithered across the floor. The room was dirty and his path was covered in garbage and empty bottles from the night before, but he kept pressing forward. When he finally made it to the water bottle, 45 minutes later, he felt victorious. He felt like the king of queens. (laughs) But as he reached for the bottle, he realized... The bottle was empty. There was no water in it. And the sink was on the other, other side of the room, which he would have to take the water bottle to to fill it up. So here he had a dilemma. Crawl again another 45 minutes to the other side of the room, or open up the window to his small queen's apartment and yell at the people below. He opened up the window and looked out and saw his neighbor, Rhoda, on the sidewalk. Rhoda! Rhoda, please help! I'm thirsty! (laughs) Frederick, is that you? Uh, What did you say? You're bursting! Frederick realized that Rhoda was hard of hearing. No, Rhoda, I'm thirsty. When Rhoda realized what Frederick was saying, she did not seem pleased, for thirsty meant something else. (laughs) 
And even though she was hard of hearing, Rhoda was hip with the lingo. <laughs> story pause. Ha, hip. I was thinking that too, like a broken hip. Oh. Okay, resume the story. Why are you going to talk about yourself like that? Rhoda yelled up to Frederick. Frederick could feel the last bits of water depleting from his body, himself turning into a sort of desert person. Rhoda, please, I didn't mean I wanted to fuck you. I meant I really need water and I can't reach it and my rare neurological condition is making it hard for me. He then dropped the water bottle out of the window, and it almost hit Rhoda, and Rhoda was pissed. Story pause. She's on the street, right? She's yeah. She's just, yeah. like, standing out on the street, yeah. watching him yeah. from the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. Okay, story resume. So. Rhoda picked up the water bottle from the ground and threw it into the garbage and walked away. Possibly to return later. (laughs) (sighs) Frederick felt hopeless. However, he knew he had one card to play. For he truly was... The king of queens. (laughs) Frederick knew that if he called one of his many friends, one of them would come over and bring him some water. But his phone was on the other side of the room. (laughs) So he stuck his head out the window and yelled to the street, People of Queens, it is I, your King Frederick, and I need your assistance. And a voice from outside yelled, Shut up! The window closed rapidly down onto Frederick, and he found himself pinned in the window way sill. In the window spot. Ow! People of Queens, please! It is I, your king, Frederick! Now I'm even in a worse predicament! Someone come to my aid! All of a sudden, there was a knock at the door. Excuse me, Frederick, it's the plumber. Frederick lived in a nice building right next to Christopher Plummer (laughs) and was good friends with him. I just finished replacing Danny Masterson in a movie for nine days, but I'm back. And I know about your rare neurological condition. Do you need any help? (laughs) Frederick was relieved. Yes! 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 But in his position, his voice was only traveling to out of the apartment to the people onto the street down below. Who only heard, yes, yes, yes. The people on the street assumed some weird sex thing was happening up there, as often happens in Queens. And Christopher Plummer knocked on the door once again. Frederick, I hear the muffling and I hear the sound of someone in there and I know you're in there. Why are you avoiding me? If you want me to use my key, Christopher continued, just 
Say yes. Yes! Frederick screamed. I can't understand what you're saying, Christopher said. A voice from the street hollered out to Frederick. Hey, buddy, close your doors. Or get a room. Frederick was so frustrated. All he wanted was a drink of water. He yelled out again. Christopher! Chris! Open the door! All right then, Christopher Plummer said from the other side of the door. I see you need privacy, and I'll leave you be. As Christopher Plummer walked away, Frederick thought about all the times... He had taken life for granted. <laughs> and as he thought about all those times, the song played in his head. Memories from the corner of my mind. Misty watercolored <laughs> memories. Of the way we were. Story pause. <laughs> Story resume. A small crowd gathered outside of Frederick's apartment as they listened to him singing. It was beautiful. For Frederick thought the music was only in his mind. But he was in such an advanced state of dehydration that he was actually singing it out loud. All of a sudden, a voice from the crowd said, Hey, you got a great voice. Do you have any representation? I can make you a star. Please, I need water. The numbness is traveling above my waist. And I don't need representation. I'm the fucking king. Oh, come on. Everybody needs representation. My name is Scooter McGee. <laughs> and I'm the best musical agent in town. <laughs> Upon the reveal of Scooter McGee's name, the group around him all turned to him, realized who he was, and almost swooned. Like, like sort of a celebrity, but, but like, hey, you're like that guy. Someone else from the crowd yelled, if you don't know Scooter McGee, man, like, he's a big deal, dude. Like, you should probably get on that, man. Like, get, like, like listen, like, take his word for it, man. Frederick was getting weaker and weaker. Will somebody just come up here and help me? Frederick's body was becoming more and more limp. And as he felt his body slithering out from underneath his control, he slipped back into the apartment and the window closed completely. After f two minutes of lying under the windowsill in agony, not pain because it was more numbness, but agony of mind, <laughs> He heard another knock at the door. Story pause. Agony, but not painful. Yeah, like mental anguish. Okay. <laughs> I could have said anguish, but I said acne. Because, you know, why not? Agony or acne? 
He doesn't have acne. He's the king. Okay. We, <laughs> I'm glad. We, I'm glad we figured that out. Serves him. <laughs> Yo, it's Scooter. I know you're in there. <laughs> you better let me in. I'm going to sign you and I'm not taking no for an answer. Frederick began his crawl to the door, one arm in front of the other. A story pause is a good callback, John. He's waiting for validation for that. <laughs> <laughs> story resume. <laughs> I'm coming, Scooter. Um, but just, you know, there's actually a key under the welcome mat. It's shaped like a key. Scooter went under the welcome mat and took out the key that was shaped like a key and unlocked the door. But the door stopped because of the bolt lock oh. or chain lock that let, let's go chain lock so that he could peer just inside and not be able to help frederick was distraught he normally didn't leave the chain lock bolt lock bolted lock chained but he was worried the night before for he had received a letter that was quite disturbing Scooter looked through the crack of the door. Yo, you look really messed up. I sort of have this uh, condition where it's not the memento condition, but it's more with numbness, not with memory. Yeah, whenever I get dehydrated, I can't really lose, like, um, like control of my body. And, uh, well, I don't know. Why do I drink? <laughs> Scooter looked at Frederick. Oh, you know, I saw something about, like this. Uh, they were talking about it on Kathy Lee and Hoda the other day. Oh, I don't watch that, Frederick said. I'm much more of a view kind of guy. Well, I got a, a bottle of water right here. I think it'll fit through the door jam. Do you, do you want it? I can throw it to you. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times yes, Frederick yelled. On one condition, Scooter said. The condition is... <laughs> you sign a 20-year contract to sing. Meanwhile, in the apartment next door, Christopher Plummer had his ear planted to listen in on the conversation. Well, this sounds interesting, he said, but I'll be damned if my neighbor gets a 20-year musical contract when I've only had an agent for acting for 60 years. This young whippersnapper's not going to take my limelight. <laughs> Frederick weighed his options and finally called out, Yes, please, throw me the water. But instead, Scooter threw in a contract. And then a pen. Frederick went to grab the pen, but then he realized his he couldn't move his fingers. And thus he tried to grip the pen between his elbows. As he negotiated the pen to the contract carefully and pressed it down, he realized it was a fountain pen. And then Scooter threw in the ink. <laughs> the story pause, you mean like a quill? Like a, like a, one of those, those old pens you gotta dip in the ink. 
Yeah. That's not a fountain pen, though. It is a fountain pen. Is it? I think so. Doesn't the fountain pen, it's like a... Well, they have ballpoint pens. And oh, like, there's like, the fountain pen's but like you one you, you have to put ink in the top. You yeah. don't have to dip it necessarily, but you got to put it Listeners, in the Listeners, please, le- please let us know. We don't know how to Google. Listen. <laughs> yes. I can't resume it. We're we're more about the bings. <laughs> we're more about binging <laughs> than Google. Googling. Oh. Ah, see? That, that was good. Thank you, Peter. their own format here. Story resume. Scooter looked down at Frederick. If you want a drink of this water, you better sign it. And then he uncapped the water bottle and took a little sip. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Excuse me, sir. May I ask what you're doing in my hallway with that water bottle? Christopher Plummer said. I'm doing my business, Scooter said. I'm Scooter McGee, and I'm the most famous popular music agent in town. Scooter McGee, I've heard about you, Scooter McGee, and none of it's good, Christopher Plummer said as he scowled at Scooter. What do you mean? I'm Scooter McGee. I'm basically the king of queens. What? A voice erupted from inside the apartment. Frederick was pissed. You're the king of queens? Oh, hell no! I'm the king of queens. Adrenaline rushed through Frederick's body, and he tried to rock and cradle himself up to a sort of sitting-up position on the floor. Christopher Plummer shot daggers at Scooter McGee, and then raised up his fists in a fisticuff style pose. Oh, you think you're something? Well, you're gonna have to deal with me, Scoot. And my incredible singing voice of this song that I'm gonna sing for you right now. (laughs) But before he could sing a song, a voice from down the hallway erupted. I hear a lot of talk about the King of Queens, and no one has consulted me. It was Kevin James, the King of Queens. (laughs) Story pause. Can I story pause myself? I was hoping you would go there, but... um... I realized I gave him a really fat voice and he doesn't have one in real life, but in my mind he just, because he's Kevin James, it's just a ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Again with ho, ho, ho. Sorry, resume. Kevin James had just returned home from set from filming Paul Blart Mall Cop 3. This time, it's personal and was standing on a segue that he took from set. I'm gonna take you all down, he said. And he <laughs> scooted, or segged his way, right into the, the dueling men. He hit the dueling men with his segue, and Scooter went flying across the room. Bing. Bing. Hallway. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, we'll give a little, we'll give allow a correction. But that was, that was amazing. <laughs> that was good. Because I was going to say hallway, and then I was like, what? hallway or room? Mm, it's definitely a hallway. But he knew... Yeah, we're, we knew your problem, so you're not being... But if you ever buy a house and it says it's three bedrooms and it's one bedroom and two hallways, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> not Not good at all. Scooter's body slammed into Frederick's door and 
burst open the chain lock, and he landed onto the floor right before Frederick. And the water bottle rolled out of his hand, right next to Frederick's face. Frederick slithered over to the water bottle and grabbed it with his mouth and took the top off with his teeth. Before he could wrestle the top of the water bottle open, he could smell something in the apartment. A sort of smoke? Yes, the friction from his slithering over to the water bottle started a small fire on the apartment carpet. So he needed to make a decision. Save himself, or save Christopher Plummer, Scooter McGee, Kevin James, and everyone else in that apartment. He didn't know what to do, but then he heard a female voice. I'll save you. And he looked over, and it was Leah Remini. Oh, from the King of Queens. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, that's a random person to bring in. She, too, had just gotten off of the set from Paul Blart Mall Cop 3. This time, it's personal. And she was returning something to Kevin James, but also knew Frederick. For you see, in her hideouts from Scientology, Leah Remini had disguised herself as a hard-of-hearing older lady named Rhoda. (laughs) Leah Remini walked up to the fire with her full water bottle and poured all of the water on the fire extinguishing it immediately not only was that good acting but she acted fast (laughs) and then she reached down picked up Scooter McGee's water bottle and poured it directly into Frederick's mouth As the water went down Frederick's throat, he could feel the vitality coming back into his body. It was like Popeye eating spinach. It went through every single atom in him, and he popped up to his feet and screamed like a gorilla. Oh, I feel great. Even though this normally takes me a couple of hours for my muscles to regain uh, walking ability, now I could go for a walk or a jog. Wow, that was amazing. Now that he regained his strength, he grabbed Scooter McGee by the collar. I'd love to have a singing career. But you must acknowledge me as the King of Queens. Here, see this document. He shoved his King of Queens certificate in Scooter's face. Which was also signed by Kevin James, relinquishing title of King of Queens to Frederick. Oh, your liege, I, uh, I had no idea, Scooter said. Well, you know now. Behind this scene, Christopher Plummer... Kevin James and Leah Remini were all bent on one knee, hailing to their king of queens. My first decree as singing king will be to sing a song for you about my experience I've had today. Here it is. It's the main event! (laughs) He started singing and dancing around the room. Extra, extra, I'm in love. I'm gonna think my lucky stars above. (laughs) Story pause. 
Story reason. The song ended, and his audience watched with gleaming eyes, both in love with the sight and the sounds, and thought just how lucky they are to be in this kingdom. And as Frederick went to open the window to get some fresh air and the smell of smoke out of his apartment, he saw the entirety of Queens gathered outside. His song had carried that far. And they all looked up at his building, at, to his window, and clapped. To which Frederick turned to the others in his apartment and asked, Who wants to drink? The end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was amazing. that was that was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we got two singing breaks from Les, <laughs> Leah Remini, Leah Remini. We this was a star-studded. This was a star-studded <laughs> episode. It really took me a second to figure out why you said Leah Remini. <laughs> she was Mrs. No, Ms. I know. I, Mrs. I, Heffernan. Of course. Because it was course. Doug Heffernan and Mrs. Oh, Heffernan. God. That's not as embarrassing as how long it took for me to realize why you were saying King of Queens. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what does Kevin James have to do with this? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, we're in Queens. <laughs> it was an embarrassing mm. time. And uh, no bings today unless we want to count. I don't want to count it. I don't I feel don't right. Count it. Especially it. given the performances Les has given us today. <laughs> Thank you, Les. As the as the real king of queens. Yeah. King of king of the We angels. also never established that this was Queens, New York, so this could be a fictional kingdom called right. Queens. It's true. True. He could be the real king. And and the people of Queens yelled out <laughs> to Frederick the King. Hey, you shut up! <laughs> Listen, maybe he was like a deposed king. Maybe people forgot about him. Maybe it's like Sweden, which is a kingdom, but like, is it really a kingdom? You it's know, like, like there's a president. Like in stuff. an apartment building. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and he's got a small apartment. Right. He doesn't have servants because he can't even get his own water. And he has carpet. Yeah. <laughs> it was dirty. King? There was balls everywhere. Well, you remember this all came from a hangover. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. See, so take that. Ed Helms. <laughs> and, You're going to blame uh, Ed Helms? And for... Zach Galifianakis and Bradley Cooper and the other guy. Okay, let me, let me rephrase. You're going to blame the actors for those movies? No, I'm just saying like we did a better version of a hangover story than they did. Where's our $150 million each? In the mail. Seriously, I could use that. <laughs> I, heard it was, I heard it was in the mail. Okay, good. It'll be good. here soon. Um, we, we can split it up. In mm-hmm. in in uh, you know I'll get eighty. Okay. Uh, you'll get thirty. Okay. And Les, Les will get, get eighty. F- yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That yeah that checks out. Oh, you were saying millions. I thought you were doing bad percentage math as a joke. No, I was doing millions. Okay. But that works too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what did you guys learn today? <laughs> Stay hydrated. Yo, for real. That is a serious, that's an actual lesson. There's like that's no joke. Real, that. That's a real lesson. I mean, that's the lesson about today. Look, I'm, I mean, John's got a water bottle here. It's one of those fancy metal ones. It's like, ooh, look at me. I'm fancy. I drink a lot of water. I'm so special. That's how he feels all the time. That's how it looks like when he's drinking out of that water bottle. Fuck you. Hey, um, I whittled this water bottle from a stone, a singular stone. It's made of metal, like I said. Well, I did a really good job. <laughs> But you know what? Even if you don't stay hydrated, bring a bottle of water with you. At all times. Yeah, you never know what kind of... And you know, I feel really bad if there actually is a neurological disorder that <laughs> that paralyzes people from not drinking water. We're going to be protested. Yep. By the five people with that affliction. John, what and, if... and the one guy from Peru. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't talk bad about our Peruvian listener. No, I'm just saying he's going to surprise us by being like... The one guy. The guy who leads this... Or gal. Or gals, you know, there we we have more than one download per episode in Peru. So like, really? So there might be two people listening. We have a following. In Listen, Peru. Peru, get at us. You're our favorite country right now. I wonder how you found us. Was it by looking through the catalog by perusing? 
See, this is how we lose our Peruvian listeners. Don't listen to him. We love you. We love Machu Picchu. We love alpacas. We love Lima. I've heard it's a beautiful city. Yes. Yeah. I know they have really cool ponchos, like those ponchos. Yeah. And they're just they're just lovely people. Okay. Sure. This episode was sponsored by the Peru the Peru Tourism Board. (laughs) John, what did you learn today? Well, first of all, I learned I learned that Les is an incredible singer. Yeah, that's an good performer. That's, that's an amazing. That's all you need to know. He's the falsetto voice of our times. Yeah, our generation. Um, okay. I mean, I feel that's like I knew a lot of what was in this okay. story. See, what I learned is sharing information. If you've got like, if you live in an area, maybe New York or L.A., and you've got a female neighbor who's a little bit strange, make sure it's not. Lee Remini or some other excommunicated Scientology member because you never know when they might help out. <laughs> Be nice to your neighbors, I guess, is what I've learned. That was and, another real lesson. And uh, don't forget, this mm. episode of Finish My Story yes. is brought to you by Paul Blart Mall Cop 3. This time it's personal. I was I was a little upset. You, It's a great title. You However, need a, you need a there's no... Um, no, there's no... <sighs> There's no pun in there. I thought I would thought better of you. Hmm. Yeah. That's okay. We'll come up with it next time. Well, we can't because it's really, it's a real movie coming to theaters soon. That's right. I mean, it's not my fault. This, yeah. is, this was the... they, I'm upset at you, Paul Blart. Mom, I'm Paul reading off this people. card. Why you, yeah. gotta, why you gotta do that? So that's what, that's our sponsor today. Also, of course, um, shout out to Lunchables. It's like a cracker. It's like some meat, and it's like cheese. They're not those things, but it's like it enough that it tastes fine. Hmm. That's the official slogan. It's almost food. <laughs> and Panda Express, we're still waiting for our free Panda Express. Ooh, that I could go for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. We did a whole episode about pandas. You know, I'm starting to get angry. Fuck you. Okay. Whoa, it's getting hostile. It's getting, getting hostile. It's the rain. It's making everyone go crazy. Yeah, I think, everyone. <laughs> I think that's all today. You guys have anything to add? No story punishment this week, but we'll give you some King of Queens content. Yes. What do you have to add? <laughs> you have to add something? Oh, you no, you were just saying, saying yes. Saying about... Yes, King of Queens content. Yeah. Anything to add, guys? No. Okay. But but I would like to add thank you everyone for listening. Oh, thank you for listening. And thank you. Feel free to like, you know, send us some send us some comments. Let yeah. us know what you love, what you hate. Clearly what you there are people see, out there listening. What you want to see done more, maybe if yeah. you really had a favorite episode. Yeah. If you want Peter to like, you know, talk less. Like all, everyone wants that. <laughs> everything's on the table. Speaking of speaking of me talking less, actually this is not about that, but it's something I meant to bring up earlier. Today would have been a great day for it was a dark and stormy night. And right now We've already done that episode, um, and it, yeah, right now that's the episode that has maybe our least downloads, and I think it's just the way we released it. Guys, go listen to that episode. It's a great episode. It's got my favorite line of the entire podcast in it. It's about bankers. It's really good. Go check out our library of episodes, you know? You sort of lack some self-awareness, Peter, by saying, speaking of me talking less, I'm going to go on this big old rant. About that was, older that was clearly the point I was making here. I don't like it. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> Have a great rest of your, you know, day, night, weekend, week, um, afternoon, lunchtime, gym time, car ride, whatever it is. You know, just enjoy enjoy your life like just uh, have fun with it. You know, it's like life is what you make it and if you just keep on going. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Bye. Later guys.